this is a case of large fibroid uterus you can see the uterus and the large fibroid posterior fibroid and there is a cyst in the right ovary and one more fibroid on the right side you can appreciate the anatomy here uterus posterior fibroid and another fibroid over there and there is a cyst in the right ovary so we are uh, using voyen system this is from applied medicals so this see actually seals and cuts the round ligament you can see the round ligament is uh, divided by using the energy source and we are further going down on the broad ligament and you can appreciate the uv fold of peritoneum which is being stretched by lifting the bladder by using the left hand once you open the uv fold of peritoneum the carbon dioxide will enter into the plane and it will open up the plane very nicely in case of uh, previous cesarean section you have to be very careful at this level because the bladder will be densely adherent to the cervix and lower segment of the uterus and there is a possibility of bladder injury so you have to be very careful during this step of the procedure so we are extending the incision beyond the uv fold of peritoneum into the left side broad ligament you can extend it up to the left round ligament it is a u shaped incision starting from the right broad ligament going across the uv fold of peritoneum ending at the left round ligament and now we are dividing the fallopian tube on the left side and this left ovary looks normal and little bit of uh, hydrosalpin changes are there in the left fallopian tube so you have to keep the specimen in the pouch of douglas so that it will not be missing the specimen at the end of the procedure now we are turning our attention towards the left round ligament which is being sealed and divided by using the voyen system we can appreciate the anatomy of the left round ligament and just beyond this is the ovarian ligament which actually attaches the ovary to the uterus that is the ovarian ligament that is the ovarian ligament on the left side and you can see a large fibroid sitting behind the ovarian ligament occupying the entire pelvis after dividing the ovarian ligament we are going towards the left side broad ligament while dividing this broad ligament you have to be very careful we have come to the right side you can appreciate the uterine vessels coming into view that is the posterior leaf of broad ligament the fibroid is sitting behind and the stretch with the left hand helps in opening up the plane so that we can mobilize the bladder further downward harmonic scalpel is very useful for uh, this part of the dissection for dividing the pedicle we can use a bipolar for dissection harmonic scalpel has got advantage until you see the shining smooth cervix surface you have to create a plane you can see the cervix posteriorly and the urinary bladder anteriorly and a nice plane coming in between the cervix and the urinary bladder and you can also appreciate here the course of the 
right uterine vessel. So the uterine vessel is skeletonized by dividing the anterior leaf and posterior leaf of the broad ligament so that the vessel can be sealed effectively and divided. That is the uterine vessel you can appreciate course of the uterine vessel. So that has to be sealed at multiple places before dividing so that the chances of post-operative bleeding will be prevented. So you can see we have sealed the uterine vessels at multiple places before actually dividing the uterine vessel. So if you are doing this, we can discharge the patient in the same day or next day. So combination of uh, a vessel sealing device and the harmonic scalpel actually prevents any post-operative bleeding. Whenever you are operating a large size fibroid, you will have a larger uterine vessels. So you have to take time in sealing these larger size uterine vessels before actually dividing it. Once the uterine artery is divided, then closely work on the surface of the cervix so that there will not be any injury to the ureter. When you stay on the medial side of the uterine vessel, there will not be any injury to the ureter. Now we have come to the left side. Again, we are doing the same step. That is the division of the anterior leaf of broad ligament and the posterior leaf of the broad ligament in order to skeletonize the left uterine vessels. In the process, we will be dividing the left side uterosacral ligament also. Once you divide the uterosacral ligament, the ureter will move laterally and the chances of injury to the ureter is avoided. So, we are actually connecting the incision on the posterior side of the uterus also. You can see the course of the left uterine vessel which is sealed by using uh, vessel sealing device. Again, the same step, sealing has to be done at multiple places. You can see the course, tortuous course of the uterine vessel. So, the vessel is carefully held with bipolar instrument and sealed. So, you have to work on the surface of the cervix and never move away from the cervix. And actually, the vessel is sealed at the junction between the uterus and the cervix and further dissection down will be then medial to the uterine vessel. So you have to take more time in this particular step because this is the most important step in any uterus removal surgery. After sealing the uterine vessels at multiple places, then we are dividing the left uterine artery by using harmonic scalpel. This uh, further division should be done up to the phonics. Meticulous hemostasis is very essential. A 
and normally there will not be any blood loss in protein uterus removal surgeries. After uh, doing uh, the uterine vessel division on either side, then we can introduce CCL retractor through the vagina so that the division of the, the opening of the vaginal vault will be made much easier. You can see the blue color CCL retractor seen through the vaginal opening and you can see the bulging CCL retractor inside the vagina. After entering into the vagina, you can slightly withdraw the CCL retractor so that we can complete the division of the vagina at the phonics level by using harmonic scalpel. You can see the entire cervix is coming along with the uterus specimen. And uh, during this time, you should not injure accidentally the divided left uterine vessels. So you stay close to the cervix and uterus. You can see the CCL retractor which is lying inside the vagina. You can appreciate the cervix also completely removed. We are extending the division on the anterior aspect and uh, before uh, finally dividing you can uh, relax the traction on the uterus and cervix so that the hormone scalpel will not suddenly cut and cause bleeding. This is the final division. The uterus is totally free. And this is right side salphingo euphorectomy. And you can see the uh, vault is fixed to the left uterosacral ligament. And you can appreciate the vagina is packed by using a vaginal pack so that there will not be any carbon dioxide leakage. So the vaginal vault is uh, closed by using a PDS suture that is on zero PDS suture. and we are giving final was you can appreciate both right and left uterosacral ligaments are fixed to the vaginal vault in order to prevent uterine prolapse in the post operative period at the later stage we have removed the left tube right tube and right ovary we have left the normal left ovary intact this is the final stage of the procedure and final appearance thank you very much